5 o'clock hour, I'd like to convene the Committee of the Whole of City Council October 12th and ask for a roll call, please. Jacobson? Finucane? Here. Marquardt? Here. Snow? Here. Noriko? Here. Baker? O'Leary? Ray? Here. Five present. Thank you. Um, we have two considerations this evening for Committee of the Whole, the strategic plan update. Uh, we've received the cover memo in our backup material. I'll turn to Patty Hoppenstadt. Yes, thank you. Point. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so for this evening, first item, we have the 10-year strategic plan for the City of DeKalb. Uh, staff has been working collaboratively with the Center for Governmental Studies, and Diana Robinson is here tonight to address everyone. And in working with Center for Governmental Studies, we determined that um, you know additional time was going to be needed and appropriate to give the strategic plan the, the attention and the detail it deserves. Uh, originally, we were planning on bringing the document for your consideration tonight but we will be doing that in November. Um, staff has been sp have spent a lot of hours working um, internally after the city council retreat to outline the specific strategies and you know, uh, goals and actions. So a lot of work is, is ongoing, and again, an additional month we feel is what's necessary to bring a complete document uh, to, the, to the council. And, I'll turn it over to Diana Robinson, who's going to give us an overview of the current status of the plan. Okay, good. Diana. Good evening. Welcome. Um, as Patty said, the original timeline was to present the strategic plan draft to you today and um, request action at the October 26th meeting. Um, that timeline, if you recall, originally was driven by the ABC planning grant timeline. Uh, they are required to submit their draft by November 6th, and in order for them to do that, um, they needed a, a plan that was officially adopted by the city council um, before that time. Well, in subsequent conversations with them, they believe that the framework that's already been developed that came out of the retreat is sufficient to meet their requirements. So that pressure has been taken off the table, which was a great relief to us all. There are three um, developments, really, that factored into our request this evening. The first is that, uh, as, as Patty explained in what I just um, said, the, um, the framework that emerged from the retreat is adequate, so um, that, that's one uh, development. The second, again, as Patty already described, is that the executive team has been working very diligently to translate the uh, document that came out of your retreat into a much more nuts and bolts action document. So you developed, you identified the vision statements and the priority goals, and what they've been working on are the, um, the strategies, the actions, and, and making those measurable. And that takes quite a bit of work. Um, that the framework itself was, was considerable in its scope and detail, so it's taking a little more time than we'd initially thought to, f to flesh all that out. Uh, it's also, I really feel compelled to um, give the executive team credit for the amount of time and thought they're putting into this. Uh, it's, a, it's a very um, rich document, and they are trying to align all of their efforts with the conceptual piece that you developed in your retreat. Um, and to give it the, the, the time that it deserves, as Patty said, um, is just taking us out a little bit further than we thought. The third uh, factor that's, that's um, in play right now is that the executive team also wants to use this framework for the 2016 budget. So that's just another layer that's being filtered in as they think through all of the actions and planning that they want to make, um, making sure that it's all reflected in this document. So at the end of the day, this is a 10-year strategic plan. It's very ambitious. And I think uh, the executive team fully recognizes that it's going to be an accountability document for the foreseeable future. So they're um, taking their time. They're making sure that all the details are in there and that it's as comprehensive as, and complete as, as, they, as they need. So in a nutshell, we're recommending that we have one additional month to bring the completed document back to you. Um, I'm very pleased and, and gratified at the amount of work that's gone in and, and happy to take any questions. Diana, you mentioned the third step. 
being the uh, 2016 budget. Uh, I think you're referring to 2016-17? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Because we have the adopted budget in front of us this evening uh, in a document, but it's the preparation for the 16-17 Exactly, right. Budget. I misspoke. Um, I'm pleased to hear the, the deliberate uh, time that uh, staff is spending on the strategic plan. Um, I am confident with the additional time being spent on the plan that we will have deliverable action plans and strategies that uh, staff can be accountable for. Um, other discussion from council? Okay, do you need um, any action from council this evening? At this point, Mayor, if you know, we will come back in November with the document for your approval, um, if that so pleases the council. Okay, and I'm I'm pleased too to hear the America's Best Community Grant Committee um, not being dependent on this next step um, can move forward on their respective timeline. If I may just add as well that um, we've had the honor of working with that group and. Uh, the, the vision that came out of your retreat is truly driving the work of that group as well. So it's one vision that's diverging into several paths. It's pretty exciting to see. Excellent. Very good. Okay, seeing no questions, I'll thank Diana and, and Patty for that report this evening. Thank you. Um, FY16 budget update, Patty. Yes, um, Finance Director Kathy Haley is going to walk us through um, the documentation and presentation that she's prepared for us this evening. Thank you. Um, I do have, I think, one slide, so it's not imperative that it's up there right now. Uh, I just wanted to, now that we're three months into our FY16 budget, kind of give a summary of where we're looking to end fiscal year 15 at. The auditors are currently here for their second week this week. Uh, to do a wrap-up, so we've got a pretty good idea of where we're ending for fiscal year 15. And then to summarize these first three months um, of FY 2016, highlighting the impact uh, of the states not still having adopted their own budget at this point in time. So after three months, expenditures should be, in theory, trending around 25%. Uh, the general fund expenditures are, tr are trending slightly behind that at about 22.62%. I did a breakout in your memo by department. Um, you can see several departments are right around the 22, 23% mark. Some of them are significantly lower. The uh, Human Resource Department, Public Works Department still have two um, high-level positions that have not been filled. So that's why they're trending in much lower at 14 0.2% and at 18.69%. Um, community development is showing low as well. There are a couple of unfilled positions there. There is an audit credit that will be coming through there that will get pushed back to FY15, so they'll be trending in a little bit higher. They're still trending uh, well below the 25% though. Um, I just want to state with police and fire, a good portion of their personnel is their pension contributions for the tax levy and 50% of that has already occurred in the first three months. So it looks like they're trending higher than the rest of the departments, but that's really why. There's a large portion of their personnel cost at 1.64 million and 2.2 million. So they are also trending below the 25%. Um, with that, revenues are trending slightly ahead at about 26.1%. The city is um, showing actual income tax revenue for the first three months of FY 2016, trending in ahead of budgeted revenue by more than 11%. Um, projecting this out through the, rema the remainder of FY 16 uh, would show actual income tax revenue coming in over budget by more than $480,000. And while we know it's early in the year, um, we have seen unemployment rates have dropped that impacts this revenue. This is a portion of the LGDF revenue um, that we get from the state. We are still receiving that from the state. Um, in addition to that $480,000 projection, uh, we did budget a surplus of $502,743 for fiscal 2016. 
So just those two revenue streams, which is a really good story, could put us ahead of budgeted expenditures by almost a million dollars. Um, so my one chart, maybe. This chart, it's, a, it's one chart, but I think it tells a really great story of the city of DeKalb and how they have been really working diligently over the last several years and trying to get back their general fund balance reserve um, to be in uh, compliance with the city's fund balance policy of 25%. So you can see reserves dropped really low back in 2010, um, 1%. That was $22,169 was what their unrestricted reserves were at. Um, since then, the focus has been on establishing this 25% fund balance. It has been a goal and a priority. Um, with the audit, for 2015 in full swing, initial projections show the city fund balance rebounding quicker than initially projected during the uh, budget process for FY 2016. Rough projections are showing the city ending 2015 at about 22%, and uh, which brings us over $7 million and over 23% by the end of 2016 based on budgeted numbers. Um, which could bring our fund balance reserves anywhere between $7 million and $8 million, which is the strongest uh, the city has been in well over 10 years. So again, it's a great graph. It's a great story. Um, and to continue on with the State of Illinois budget update, the city has continued to closely monitor pending legislation at the state level. Um, the city is now three months into our fiscal 2016, and the state has still not passed their budget. Um, nor has there been any indication that it is close to uh, being adopted at this time. As you may recall, the initial um, proposals coming out of the governor's office called for a 50% reduction to the local government distributive fund, or LGDF, um, which is what we commonly know it as, which is good. That's really state income tax for the city's purposes. Um, this original 50% reduction has now been taken off the table. Uh, the most recent bill that we see that is even a possible recommendation is a 10% reduction in LGDF. 10% uh, reduction for the city of DeKalb would equal about $450,000 which is less than the budgeted surplus of $502,743. And if you remember back where I said income tax revenue was streaming in at, it's $480,000 ahead of budget at this point. So if we did take that cut, we could still come in within our budgeted amount uh, for the year, if that was even on the table. Again, at this time, there is no reliable information to indicate if there could be an LGDF reduction how much the reduction would be, when the reduction would take place, or for what period of time. In the event a 10% reduction did take place, the city could certainly absorb this in the general fund budgeted surplus. While the city's fund balance is on the rebound, and this is excellent news, staff is going to continue to monitor the state's budget process. The increase in the city's fund balance over the past five years has helped put the city in a position to withstand a temporary reduction in the LGDF. Anything long-term at this point is pure speculation and continues to make it difficult to plan for the future needs of the city above and beyond fiscal 16. So moving forward, um, financial impact, um, moving forward with all the items for the FY 2016 budget year, we th feel we'll have a minimal impact based on our strong fund balance at the end of FY 2015, a budgeted surplus of $502,743 in FY 2016, and the income tax revenue increasing and coming in stronger than originally projected during the budget process by more than $480,000. Um, based on all of this information, staff will be moving forward with all the budgeted items in the general fund, including new purchases, plans and personnel. However, please note that all these items to be purchased uh, for anything over the $20,000 still need to come back to council for final approval. Um, and that would, that would happen in future uh, city council agendas. Um, so with that, I will take any questions or? Okay. Are there questions from council? Alderman Mareko. <clears throat> I'm curious whether 
the first quarter results in terms of uh, increased revenue, if that, if three months is considered to be an adequate time period in order to project for the rest of the fiscal year? It's certainly, we're certainly very, um, you know, it's a short time period into this fiscal year. Keeping in mind, we we've, we've are very conservative in our budgeted revenues to begin with. Um, you know, our sales tax, we've, we kept kind of flat, and, and that's our main source of revenue is sales tax. Mm -hmm. um, property tax, we're home rule. We levy for dollars. We get what we levy. Um, that's a very strong revenue stream and very consistent and constant. So it's the other, the next highest is the income tax. And I think trending that out, it has been increasing for the past several months. Um, and again, we did put that budgeted number in it as very conservative. So, mm -hmm. and even my projection out was conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Snow. Um, I'm, I'm sure none of us anticipated the state taking this long to finalize their budget. Um, you know, I, although I think I might be in favor of, of continuing with the some of the one-time purchases that we had budgeted, I think we still should should delay any hiring um, because that's a continuing obligation mm -hmm. and will con will affect our budgets down the road. So I, you know, I, I don't think there's any harm in still waiting another two three months um, for any of the before we lift any hiring for these. In my opinion, Alderman Finucan. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mayor, my concern is to go back to the state budget and not so much with the uh, income tax, but let's uh, make the assumption that the state budget does not get passed anytime soon and we come into second semester at Northern and Northern's no longer able to afford to continue those MAP grants to students and we lose a significant student population, how that's going to impact city revenues in terms of sales taxes uh, and amusement taxes, et cetera. And again, so I'm going to like to echo what uh, Bob said, that uh, maybe we would forestall some of those uh, uh, positions to be filled uh, at this time just because of that uncertainty. My understanding is there are two sessions of the House and one session of the Senate for further action to be taken on the budget in this calendar year, I believe. So, you know, it's, it's going to have to move quickly through those sessions if uh, we see progress. Kathy, I'd be interested in the exposure of state revenue not being dispersed. You mentioned the LGDF component, which impacts the general fund, which we're primarily focused on in this presentation tonight. But uh, my understanding is the motor fuel tax is another component that's not being dispersed to uh, our municipality. Are the, there are there other items that potentially could impact us in the big picture? So um, the first, the motor fuel tax is being vouchered, just not dispersed. I think it's an appropriation, and I asked for John McCoy from the Illinois Municipal League for legal terminology of why this particular revenue stream wasn't dispersed. I haven't heard back from him. Um, and until the budget is actually passed, they cannot dispense the money, but they have vouchered it, so we know what we're going to get. So they haven't cut anything. It's just they haven't uh, released some of those funds at this time. So there have been no cuts yet from the state, but they have held on to some of their funds. Although we know what our portion is because we get a monthly disbursement uh, sure. report of what's being vouchered for us. So. Okay. Well, I too have a concern. Alderman Snow expressed concern for those long-term obligations that, um, that are prim primarily the personnel line item that um, goes on into future years. Um, so I think we need to be be careful in in those um, staffing expenditures. Um, we do have um, coming in front of us. Um, there are going to be a separate separate revenue streams for streets and fleet replacement. And again, I realize those are outside the general fund um, 
but um, we do have those considerations to keep in mind as well. Plus, our property tax levy is going to be coming back, Kathy, end of October. October 27th is the first finance advisory meeting that okay. will discuss the tax levy. And, uh, and then, yep, the first meeting in November, second meeting in November, first meeting in December, we'll talk tax levy. So. And this would be for our, our upcoming uh, fiscal 17. Correct. 16, 17. Yep. Okay. And I think it's important to note that staff will continue to closely monitor the state. I will still do my quarterly report. You should be seeing it. It has a narrative with it. Um, I have four years of monthly historical graphings on all our major and non-major revenue sources that I put together monthly um, to put that uh, quarterly report together. So I don't think that it's that we want to just go out and spend, I think we still obviously need to monitor them closely. We need to monitor our expenditures closely as well and continually. Um, these particular expenditures, I think, are becoming uh, critical to some of our operations. Um, and total amount of these expenditures is only 1% of the total general fund expenditures. I know that some of the personnel, the largest uh, is the HR director would be ongoing, um, but it, it's, a, it's a pretty small percentage of the expenditures, um, yet some critical f um, purchases amongst them, so. Okay, and, and I would say, even though I express concern for those long-term obligations represented in those personnel staffing, um, I'd ask Kathy for you, Patty, and um, Anne Marie to watch carefully uh, the deliverables that those that staffing those positions let me reverse it not staffing those positions will result in some deliverables not being accomplished right. and I'd it, ask you to keep a close eye on those and please bring back in front of council those items that are going to be delayed and will severely or could potentially impact our city operations right and just to add uh, for instance, the, the, the staffing, the positions, and specifically the human resources director. I mean, realistically, to bring some uh, human resources or director level position on board is, is at least a three to four month recruitment process. Good point. So let's assume that, you know, as you stated, Mayor, you know, there's only limited sessions left this year, this calendar year, for any um, sort of agreement to take place on the state level. And, you know, all indications are now showing that that won't happen this year. So latest indications, some are saying that we're looking at March for a state budget. So assuming that a state budget is, is passed early next year, first quarter of next year, we are now looking at, let's say, best case scenario, if indications are correct on March, three to four months after that to even have a human resources director on board. I mean, there are critical processes, as you know, and we identified them during the budget process that need to take place, and we need to have that HR director on board to begin those processes. The personnel manual um, is, is on hold, um, the benefits handbook, uh, performance evaluation process, things that we need to get moving on as soon as possible in order to, you know, fulfill the deliverables that we communicated to council that would take place. Um, and those are things that obviously Im are impacting processes and policies and procedures are impacting the organization across the board. So our concern is, you know, we, we are confident and, you know, obviously we'll bring to you expenditures for your approval as we would with you know any process over the $20,000 spending authority within the city ma manager um, preview but you know delaying this any further it will pro it could take us especially filling the HR director position to next fiscal year um, and that's going to really um, delay and negatively impact operations for the organization when as Kathy highlighted Every indication shows us that you know even if we had LGDF cut at 10%, um, we have 
appropriately funded for that and can cover that reduction. So um, absolutely, we will continue to monitor it. Um, you know, we'd like at this point to begin the recruitment process for the HR director. Kathy will continue to provide the quarterly updates and realistically, we'll have another three months um, of projections and true numbers, excuse me, of actual numbers before we can even, you know, before we probably even get a human resources director on board. So um, at this point, we just cannot wait any longer for the state to pass their budget. And, you know, we're basically at a standstill with many processes because of that. Other thoughts or discussion from council? John, a question, if Alderman I may. Finucan. Will the uh, filling of these positions have to come before council before they are actually done? I know. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, because when we've done that for other positions within the organization, like the police department, when we've added positions, because I know they're budgeted, but they still haven't been approved because when the, I think when the budget was approved, it was that the delay would be on and that it'd have to come back for us to approve before they actually occurred. I think that's, if I recall correctly. Patty? Mayor? Did Alderman Baker? Did, all we do have to do is declare a freeze on any further hiring and everyone has to come before us then. Otherwise, they don't need our permission. It's in the budget. They'll just do it. Do you I've, been, have I've been through this a dozen times or more. You know, they, I, I mean, the staff is just going to go by what's already approved. Yeah, I, I think the technical answer is, and this is based on my recollection, I don't, I'm not sure that the council adopted a motion that limited the purchases or the hirings. Um, there certainly was that discussion, and I think that's why it's being brought back for discussion tonight. If it's something that the council does seek to limit, if you wanted to put a limitation in effect, we certainly could bring that back as an action item. Uh, and. But separately, I, I don't think the city's past practice has to has been to bring back hires uh, for individual approval if they're within the budget and the staffing plan. Where there's a change where we're adding additional, you know, if we're going to add additional full-time police officers that currently aren't a part of the staffing plan or aren't a part of the budget, then that would come back as, as an amendment. Um, but I'm, I don't believe individual hires that are within the budget have been. All right. Thanks, Dean. Okay. So, so what are we going to do? All them in the snow. Well, I'd still be in favor of kind of holding on. I mean, I, I could see advertising in an anticipated position, but I, I guess my personal preference is, is to not hold off on hiring until we have a state budget. And I realize we, we don't know when that's going to occur, but that's that's the world we, we live in, and so we got to live with that. I second that opinion. Or if that's a motion, we're not going to vote on it. Well, we can't make a motion yeah. here, but, uh, you know, that, that's my personal preference. Okay. I mean, we, we could be out of money before we know it. But Mayor, why don't you ask everybody, since they're trying to do a head count here. Um, well, we're certainly, we're not asking for a vote tonight. Again, if that's something that the council wishes to discuss as an action item, we could bring that back. But I think we've outlined the past practice and... Uh, we are outlining where the city's at today, um, but we certainly could bring something back if the council wishes. I, Mayor, there some of the other aldermen are trying to speak. That's why I said, why don't we go down the line? Oh, oh there's Alderman Marquardt. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm in favor of moving ahead just because of the time frame that it takes to put these things in place. Um, and it's kind of it's critical on some of these things to get them started in order to enact strategic goals for the city in order to improve it. You know, if we're going to improve the way the city personnel work for the city, it's critical that we have this HR director in place and have them work to provide additional savings in so many areas that have been overlooked in the past. If, you know, and they can start advertising and start recruiting um, and going through with that. And we can always say, you know, in a month or two, if things aren't coming through at that time, you know, halt. But otherwise, 
I know, Dave, you're, you're going to say, well, then it's there. But we did pass the budget, and there wasn't said. It said, you know, the staff said that they were going to hold off and not do anything pending how things were turning out. And things are kind of even at this point. I just think it's the best move for the city as a whole to start moving forward on these things. One of those things, isn't it a street patcher? Is that in? That's in the capital fund. That's one so of those. So it's not affecting general It's not money. affecting, so it's in that. All right. But Kathy, didn't you indicate um, public works? Uh, wasn't that a staffing issue? That's the public works director, so that's, that's not an additional staff. Okay. It was not an okay. Position. Okay. I was I was looking for the personnel items that. Uh, it there were two interns, one in engineering, one in fire, okay. and then the HR director, and that was that was the only staffing. Okay. New. Other thoughts from council members. Alder, uh, Alderman Rick. While I have a concern about the. Uh, lack of a state budget I from personal experience as Alderman Marquardt pointed out um, I know that recruitment processes for this kind of position do take longer than one can ever imagine they will take and I do think this is going to be a challenging position to fill because the individual will come in with many projects on their plate. And so, therefore, I would support beginning the initial steps of recruitment and then, you know, having a discussion when um, Finance Director Haley comes back with follow-up reports. Okay. Alderman Baker. Um, I don't know what you thought I was going to say, Mike, <laughs> but uh, they've still got 100% green light unless we do as the attorney said, bring it back for an action item. They will not have to come back and discuss anything with us. And I'm, I'm telling you, a dozen times I've seen this in the last 15 years, all of a sudden we find out there's somebody working for six months or nine months and we say, how did that happen? And we have to be clearer on what we're telling them to do. I've got three different things I've heard up here. We're all curious as to whether or not we're going to be out of money and how we would deal with it. But if they start this process, sign a contract, and then we say, no, we can't afford them, they get a severance package, and at the very least. So you know, we need to bring this back at a meeting to talk about where the throttle is and where the stop is, and do they ever come back to us? Unless I'm misunderstanding your direction, Dean. I. I I think you've explained it's been the past practice of the city uh, with regard to positions that are budgeted and then the staffing plan. So, so you, uh, giving our opinions right now mean nothing unless we tell them to bring it back f for an action item, and then we are very concrete on our on our uh, uh, our wishes because right now you didn't say anything to slow them down. They're just going to hire somebody, and it could be next month. It could be next week. I'm sorry, I know what you're I, trying I to say, but, but that isn't what effectively I, you did. And I guess deep down, I don't have an issue with that. Well, but, but there, you know, we're missing several council people right now, and I'm, I'm not hearing a, a, um, a consistent, like, this is what we want to do, and everybody's saying, yeah, that sounds great. So uh, uh, how many people do you need to tell you to bring it back for an action item? Well, I'm hearing Alderman Baker speak to bringing it back, which our October 26th would be our next meeting. Um, yes. Are there others? Uh, Alderman Finucan. Yep. Alderman Finucan would like to see it brought back. Yes, please. Mark I, no, I, I'm okay. fine. Alderman Snow, yes. Okay. Yeah, because if we bring it back, we can say, all right, if you're going to go ahead and hire them and we lose the, the budget money, how are we going to deal with that exactly? I mean, this is a little more complicated than yes or no. Okay. I'd, I'd like to have it brought back for discussion. Thank you. So any new personnel would be docketed for the October 26th? meeting and discussion we will frame a we'll frame that issue for the council and offer some different options yes okay. well, well, are, are we going to look at everyone or just this one position 
I think the new new personnel is what I'm hearing. There's only two interns in the budget that are new, and then the HR director new in the FY16 budget. That's all the personnel. But one I, percent. One percent I, of the I general. I think we're also uh, less know, than one percent. Public less, Works director less. not open now. Uh, I'm open, sorry. With Public Works position open right now too. I think that should be in, included in that discussion in two weeks. Well, that, but and that's not a new item. Just to clarify. Correct. That's, oh, I understand that. But is a position where if we delay it, we could save some money just in, as an in case. But I think that's what we need to look at. John Laskowski, you're covering everything right now? No, he's not. <laughs> uh, well, he's a I, I wonderful employee, but no, John cannot sustain wearing the multiple hats, and um, we are deep in the recruitment process for the public works director position. Nobody okay, called me up and complained, so you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> Patty, when you say you're deep into that process, explain what that statement means. Um, we have uh, interviews scheduled and potential offers to follow. Okay, thank you. All right. I did not realize that was that far along. Yes. Thank you. So is that part of the discussion now or are we going to leave that out? Well, I, I think part of it could be a report on what's happening with that position yeah. at the next time. I mean, it, uh, yeah, I'm more concerned about the new position, but I wouldn't mind a report. Maybe we'll have a report as far as the status of, of the that old position. Yes, you will definitely have a report. Okay. All right. But, but, Thank you. But as far as the offers that you're giving, that wouldn't be an open session for the whole world to see, would it? That would be a closed session item? Or we never even see it ever? Dean, have we brought closed? Uh, offers in closed session? Uh, I, I certainly don't recall the city having ever discussed something like that in open session uh, in the pre-offer stage. If the council seeks to have an update on it, I think that's certainly something that we could give you an update on in executive session. Uh, I, I don't recall that having happened historically with the positions that the city has filled of late, but again, we can follow your preference. I don't think that part should be public because if you have two or three people and they have different experiences and they're falling within the range, uh, that that part is not open session until they're made, accepted an offer and then it's all public. So absolutely, we will be prepared to give an update in closed session on the status of the recruitment for the public works director position. Is that, okay. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. All right. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, other discussion on the, the budget update? Okay. Um, any uh, one from the public wishing to comment at this point? Um, hearing none, I'll move on to request a recess for executive session of City Council to discuss personnel as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C1 collective bargaining and compensation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C2 and pending litigation as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C11. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Alderman Snow. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Marquardt. Uh, roll call. Jacobson? Finucan? Yes. Marquardt? Yes. Snow? Yes. Noriko? Yes. Baker? Yes. O'Leary? Ray? Yes. Six yes. Thank you. Motion carried. We will adjourn to the large conference room and return for the regular meeting. <laughs>